Let's take um, Celebration Hymnal. Let's turn to 368. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. He lives. 368. <clears throat> Let's all stand together. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living whatever. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way.
him and his back's hurting. Look out for him. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. As Brother Donald said, Brother Tim, he's, he's hurt his back, and I know he had to go to the emergency room uh, yesterday afternoon, so for it, and if you get some medicine or get shots, I don't know what they okay. did. Yes, oh, I'll yeah, Miss Carol. give you an update. We were going to the emergency room. He was hurting so bad, and um, several people just out of the blue just called him and um, prayed with him over the phone, and within an hour, his pain was, I mean, it was just miraculous. I know God had to touch him, and um, he was able to just get up and move around. Um, he's still sore. I mean, he can't sit up for long periods of time. But I just thank the Lord that we didn't have to go to the ER. Um, I thought I was going to have to drag him and put him in the truck. But uh, the Lord took care of it. Amen. And so he says he wants to come tonight, but I don't know if he'll make it. But um, just thank y'all for your prayers and for the ones that called and had prayer with him over the phone. Amen. I've had back trouble, and I tell you, sometimes just sitting is the worst thing for it. That's when you're most uncomfortable, but um, thankful that he's doing better. Thankful for the people who prayed with him. Um, all your announcements are in the bulletin. If you got one, there's a whole bunch of announcements, so I won't read them, but if you'll look at that, we've got a lot of things coming up for everyone. A busy time of year, so be sure and, um, and look at that. Uh, of course, all the prayer requests that we had, if you're here on Wednesday night. and, and um, But it's good to see everyone, especially Miss Gloria. Love that you're here today. We've been missing you. Amen. We are praying. Love seeing you here. Um, any other special prayer requests we need to make note of today? David, I will make an announcement. Um, Brother Ethan Cloud is supposed to be preaching tonight for us. Okay. You know, he announced his call to preach several months back, and Timmy had already asked him to come preach for us. So okay, that, tonight. that's Ethan Cloud. That's Brother Shane Cloud's nephew. So he'll be preaching for us tonight. He's probably about, I don't know, maybe 20 years old, something like that. So be here tonight to hear him preach. Um, all right, any, any birthdays or anniversaries we need to celebrate today? All right, kind of a quiet week. <laughs> hey, David, hmm? one other thing we need to tell you. That's okay. A, Kira has something. I say, I Come on, I'll stand up with you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Kira. Kira got saved Friday. Amen. Oh. 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 Where did it happen? Where did it happen? At school. At school. school. Amen. Amen, Kira. That's wonderful. Amen. 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 Yes, Lila. It's your daddy's birthday? Not yet. It's coming? Not yet? No, December. Oh, coming up in December. Well, it's it's a little bit away, but <laughs> All right. Well, let's turn to uh, 661. Little as much when God is in it. 661. Singing now. In the harvest field now ripen, there's a work for all to do. Hark, the voice of God is calling to the harvest, calling you. Little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a all. Does the place you're called to labor seem so small and little known? It is great if God is in it and he'll not forget his own. Little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. Amen. 
did. Okay. <laughs> I was about to do a repeat. Okay, let's turn to um, page 11. Page 11. You get involved in singing and you don't realize where you are. That's a good song. Come thou fount of every blessing. <coughs> singing now. Come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise his name, I'm fixed upon it. Name of God's redeeming love. Hitherto thy love has blessed me, thou hast brought me to this place, and I know thy hand will bring me safely home by thy good grace. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, bought me with his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a feather, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. I love that song. Amen. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor <coughs> daily I'm constrained to be. Yeah. Amen. All right, let's turn to um, 349. Oh, how he loves you and me. A little chorus. <coughs> 349. <coughs> singing now. Oh, how He loves you and me. Oh, how He loves you and me. He gave His life. What more could He give? Oh, how He loves you. Calvary did go His love for sinners to show What He did there Brought hope from despair Oh, how He loves you Oh, how He loves you Turn to 762, 762, what a day that will be. <coughs> Amen. Let's put our hearts into it. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye, all is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. 
all stand and sing together on this last verse. <laughs> There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. For a day, for a day, that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. Choir comes down, y'all fellowship together.
All right, y'all can be seated. I thought somebody started a trumpet. I thought, get ready, we're going home. <laughs> All right, let's have. That was a test run. <laughs> Sounded just like somebody getting ready to tune a trumpet. <laughs> uh, let's have two fellas come and we'll take up our offering. Um, Miss Terry, she came in this morning. You know, we've been praying for Miss Terry for several weeks now. She's had some health trouble. She went several weeks ago and um, they did some kind of scan and they found a, a place on her pancreas. And so uh, she's been going back for several tests and everything, and they've been running things. They just couldn't find it, and she, came, she just had a test in the last few days, and they, did, they looked at that cyst, and they said it's benign. So praise the Lord for that. that amen. So praise the Lord for that. And um, so I know she's been worried about it and praying about it, and we have too. So praise the Lord for answered prayer. Um, all right, we got somebody to take up offering? All right, Brother Jeff, can you say the blessing on the offering? Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for bringing us out again this morning. Lord, we just pray you take this offering. Lord, bless it all your will and all your needs. Lord, we love and pray you so much for it all. Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have our kids come and take up the mission offering. Go ahead, buddy. You can... What is it?
I was talking with Brother Chuck a minute ago. You know, when I'm, I messed up my song, didn't know if I'd sang that verse or not. And I've noticed Brother Chuck, when he leads, he'll have one finger out, then he'll have two fingers out. And I thought, well, that's nice. He's letting the choir know which verse we're on, but he said, that's really for him. <laughs> Something about when you're up in front of people, you just forget everything sometimes. I don't know if it happens to you, but... And, and, and people, I'll say, hey, were you at church? And they'll say, yeah, I was sitting right in front of you. And I'll say, I didn't, I, I can see people, but I don't see faces sometimes. That's how it is. But um, there's a story in the Bible, first, second Chronicles. It's about King Jehoshaphat. And uh, he was the king of Judah. And it said that the uh, Bible says that Ammonites and the Moabites, just a great multitude was coming against Judah. And it said that he was so overwhelmed that he got all the people together and he proclaimed a fast and he began to uh, pray. He gathered everybody in assembly and he was praying and um, just started talking to the Lord. And in verse 12, he said, um, Lord, we have no might against this, this great company that comes against us and neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And, um, and then the Lord spoke through a Levite, sort of prophesied, and this is what he said. It said, Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by the, the reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. And he said, You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. And I've thought about this in a few days, we've got a big day happening in our country, an election. And, um, you know, we, boy, we put our hopes in that. But no matter what happens, our eyes are to be on the Lord. No matter what happens, our hope is in Him. And I was thinking about our life, how sometimes we face things that are too big for us. And we don't know what to do because our, our human nature wants to set about trying to fix things and to figure it out. And there's times that God says, this battle's not yours, it's mine. Just stand still and watch me move. And so sometimes I think about things I'm praying and I think, boy, this mountain seems too big, but it's not with God. That's when he says, David, you don't fight in this one. This one's mine. And uh, that's what this song talks about. Our eyes are upon you, Lord. In this stressing situation, Lord, we come to you again. Our enemies are many. There's no way for us to win. But we know you have the power and your victories are not few. So our eyes, O oh Lord, are on you. Our eyes, O oh Lord, are on you. Our eyes, O oh Lord, are on you. We have no might, and we don't know what to do. So our eyes, O oh Lord, are on you. It all seems so repetitious as we cry to you, dear Lord. We make the same confession that we've made to you before but we really have no guidance and again we feel confused 
So our eyes, O oh Lord, are on you. Our eyes, O oh Lord, are on you. Our eyes, O oh Lord, are on you. We have no might and we don't know what to do. Our eyes, O oh Lord, are on you. Our eyes, O oh Lord, are on you. Our eyes, O oh Lord, are on you. We have no might and we don't know what to do our eyes oh lord are on you our eyes oh lord are on you key, isn't it? To have our eyes on Him. Amen. It's good to see everybody here this morning. Good to see our visitors. Brother Steve Kaufman's mom and dad is here with us. Good to have y'all. And uh, if y'all would do, remember our pastor. I miss him when he's not here. If you would, turn to the book of Matthew this morning. Turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 6. Seems like uh, in the teaching and preaching, we've been real close near to uh, the Sermon on the Mount here lately. It is a key passage for us. It will really help you. I'm just kind of getting on the tail end of it this morning. And uh, the title this morning is just some things that we need to seek. Some things that we need to seek. We're going to start, I'm going to read Matthew 6.33. It says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, God, we're so very thankful for Your precious Word. Lord, thankful for the way it helps us and guides us through life. Thankful for Your Holy Spirit that's our teacher and guide as we read. And Lord, I just pray this morning that You'd minister to us and help us. Lord, help us to seek after you first and foremost in all matters. And Lord, I pray this morning especially for those in our church that are hurting. And Lord, I pray for our pastor. I pray for healing, God, for him. And Lord, we're thankful for all your blessings and thankful for all you do for us. In Jesus' sweet holy name we pray. Amen. So there's some things that we need to seek. Number one, we need to seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Too many times we seek the kingdom of me. Uh, And it's especially hard in America because we have a very high standard of living compared to the rest of the world. uh, But the Bible tells us, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is telling us that we need to seek after Him first. And so I'm going to back up here and uh, start reading in Matthew 6, 19. And uh, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where three thieves break through and steal, 
But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through or steal. If we look at verse 19, we can see that it is futile for us to lay up treasures here on earth because they're going to expire, they're going to decay, they're going to go away. They're not permanent, they're only temporal things. And so our focus should be laying up the treasures in heaven. Verse 21 says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eyes be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other, You cannot serve God and mammon. Our eyes have to be on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and seeking His will for our life and not our own will. We have to yield to Him. And that's hard. We're busy. We've got schedules. We've got families. We've got things to do. We've got dreams. We've got ambitions. But His will is supposed to be what we want and desire. And we've got to be willing to lay aside the things that we're wanting for Him. Because His will is perfect. And only in Him do we have true happiness and joy and love and peace. Verse 25 says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, What you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubic unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. We need to be seeking after his will and his guidance for our life. How many of y'all have ever made a mess? As a child, we make a mess, right? Especially when we get off to ourselves and get away from the guidance of our mom and dad. And when you get away from the guidance of your heavenly father, your life can become a mess very fast. So seek ye first the kingdom of God. If you will, turn with me to 1 Timothy 6. And I'll read a little bit from there. 1 Timothy 6. First Timothy chapter 6. Beginning in verse 6, 1 Timothy 6, 6. It says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Contentment is a difficult thing for us. But here it says, Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through 
with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, and fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. You know, some of that would be good to frame and put on the wall. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Seek after Him and His will for our life. 6.11 says, follow after righteousness. If we look back at Matthew 6.33, it says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. We need His righteousness. Isaiah 64.6 says, our righteousness is as filthy rags. It's no good. 61.10 says that He's clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. We need His righteousness. And can I tell you, His righteousness won't wear out. This morning I put on a shirt and I looked in the mirror and it had holes all the way around the collar. I went there and I told my wife, I said, what's wrong with this shirt? It's got stains on it. She said, it's got holes in it. I'd wore that shirt till it got holes in it. Your righteousness ain't going to get no holes in it if it comes from Christ. Amen? Amen. It's a, you, can, you, you can wear it and wear it and wear it. It ain't going to wear out. We've got to be clothed with His righteousness and not our own. Following after His will, His guidance. If you will, turn with me to Romans 13, 14. Romans 13, 14. Romans 13, 14 says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. We need His righteousness, and we need to be seeking the kingdom of God. Number one, seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Number two, we need to seek the goodness of others. Seek the good of others. If you will, turn to 1 Corinthians 10.24. 1 Corinthians First Corinthians 10.24 says, Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Philippians 2, 3, and 4. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than himself. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. And I was going to stop there, but let me read on. It said, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But listen, he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He was obedient to the Father And Jesus was all about seeking the good of others. And you and I are supposed to be clothed with the righteousness of of Jesus Christ, and we are supposed to also seek the good of others, not just looking to seek and do our own thing. If you vote this Tuesday, you're not just seeking your own, you're seeking the good of others. And we should go vote. You need to pray about that. You need to go get you a sample ballot. You need to study. You need to ask God to guide you in making that decision. You're not just seeking your own. You're seeking the good of others. It doesn't just affect you. It seeks every, it's going to affect everybody. If you're going to seek to do the good of others, You need to put yourself in the path of other people. If I'm seeking to repair cars, I'm going to go where cars are. Amen? 
If I'm seeking to help and fix and repair people, which is what the Lord Jesus Christ is all about, I need to be in the pathway of other people, seeking to do the good of others, to help them. So when you're at the gas pump, try and start a conversation. When you go out to eat and a waitress comes up, you say, I'm fixing to ask the blessing on my food. Is there something I can pray for you about today? I've had some pretty wild encounters where the Holy Spirit got involved. I've seen people just break down right there and say, yeah, sure do. There's people hurting out there, and we need to be seeking to help and seek the good of others. If you would, turn with me to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. Matthew 19, beginning in verse 16, a familiar passage. It says, and Behold, one came and said unto him, Good Master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And he saith unto them, Which? And Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and mother, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And the young man saith unto him, All these have I kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? And Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. In other words, you need to seek the good of others. But think about it. If thou be perfect, go and sell what you have and give to the poor. So close to perfection. So close. It says, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. When we started out, we said, seek the kingdom of God first. And within that passage in chapter 6, it says we don't need to lay up a bunch of stuff here on earth because it's just going to fade away. Those of you that's my age and older, do you remember storage buildings all over the place? I don't. But boy, we got a lot of them today, don't we? Kind of reminds me of, and if you've got one, please don't take offense. Kind of reminds me of the guy that says, I'm going to tear my barns down and build bigger barns. You know, there's probably some folks out there that can use some of that stuff you've got in that storage building. Lord, think about it. The the stuff that we have, we ain't taking it to heaven. And all we need is enough just to get by, y'all. That's all we need. We need to seek the good of others. As we drive up and down the road, A lot of times you can tell by just looking at a house if that's a people that needs help. They would certainly be nothing wrong with knocking on the door and saying, is there something I could help you pray about? I mean, if it says beware of the dog, I wouldn't. (laughs) Or keep out, no trespassing. But sometimes there's some people that's hurting out there and we need to seek the good of others. We need to engage We need to engage with the public. We need to engage with people out there that are hurting. There's a a song uh, years ago that I I used to enjoy listening to. And I didn't have time to write down all the words, but I want to share some of the words from the the chorus because I think that it really fits here. The name of the song was Carry Your Candle. It says, Carry Your Candle, Run to the Darkness. Seek out the helpless, confused and torn. Take up your candle and go light your world. The third course says, carry your candle, run to the darkness, seek out the hopeless, the deceived, and the poor. We need to seek the good of others. Number three, we need to seek peace and not conflict. 
we need to seek peace and not conflict. If you will, turn with me to Jeremiah 29.7. Jeremiah 29.7. Jeremiah 29, 7. Now these are the words of a letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem. I like the way he starts out, Thus saith the Lord. Boy, you're standing on firm foundation when you say that. If you're speaking God's word, you're on a sure foundation. You don't have to worry about anybody liking it or disliking it. It's God's word. Thus saith the Lord. Verse 7 and seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. Now, they're captives in a foreign land, but what Jeremiah is saying, the Lord is saying that you need to seek peace while you're here. You need to go on about your lives and conduct your lives as the best you can, glorifying God, in your daily activities. You could be an influence on that community. You could be an influence on those people. You and I are strangers and pilgrims in this world. This world is not your home. If you're a Christian this morning, this is temporary. The Word of God says that life in heaven with Jesus Christ is eternal, everlasting, forever. There's no time limit. This right here may be 80 years, and it's over. We're strangers and pilgrims. This world is not our home. In a sense, right now we're captives. We're stuck here. We're free in Jesus Christ, and we're serving Him. We're following His will. We're seeking His kingdom first. We're helping others. But this is not our home. If you would, let's look at 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter 1. First Peter 1 and 2, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be <coughs> multiplied. He's writing to strangers, believers. He's writing to Christians. And right now in this world, there's Christians all around this world. We have brothers and sisters we've never seen, we've never met, but there are brothers and sisters. They're part of our family. And I'm grieved a lot of times when I see the suffering that a lot of them are so affected by. If you ever have time, go to persecution.com where you can pray for those that are being persecuted for their faith. But he's writing to the strangers and believers that are scattered. And, he, and he, he's reminding them that they are strangers and pilgrims. 1 Peter 2.9 1 Peter 2.9 If you'll just look right on over there on another page. It says, But you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should purpose, purpose that you should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Any of y'all been called out of darkness? That's me. Into His marvelous light, which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not attained mercy, but now have attained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech ye as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, be you, 
They may be your good works, which they shall behold. Glorify God in the day of visitation. Listen to this in 13. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. That's how we live in this world. We're not supposed to go around stirring things up and causing strife. Yes, you defend yourself. But we're supposed to glorify our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And every deed and every word that we say, everything we do should bring Him glory and honor. I don't want to do anything to embarrass Him. Never. So we should speak, seek peace and not conflict. In Esther 10.3, if you want to turn there, you can or you can trust my reading. In Esther 10.3, it says Mordecai the Jew was next unto the king Ahasuerus, and great among the Jews, and accepted of the multitude of his brethren, seeking the wealth of his people, and speaking peace to all his seed. It's the last verse in the book of Esther. It was Mordecai that cried out for his nation in chapter 4 and verse 1 of Esther. It was Mordecai that convinced Esther to go before the king on behalf of the Jewish nation in chapter 4 and 14. It was Mordecai that was seeking the good of others and pursuing peace. Now those people did defend themselves, but they were all about seeking peace. Even today, we need leaders that truly seek the kingdom of God, that seek the good of others and seek after peace. In the past, they were called statesmen. Do you realize the first 40 years of our nation's existence, they got no salary? No set salary. They were looking to do the good of others. Looking on the welfare of another man. Trying to help others. It was like a calling. We need leaders today that are seeking peace and not conflict. Now, as I close today, if you're here today and you're lost, you don't know Jesus Christ, a lot of what I've spoken about this morning pertains to the Christian, those that have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and submitting themselves to His will. But if you're here today and you're lost and you don't know Jesus Christ, you really can't seek the kingdom of God. Without the Holy Spirit living inside of you, it's going to be very difficult for you to seek the good of others, although I have known some good deed doers. True peace is something you'll never have. But, and I'm thankful for that word, but, there is one who is seeking you. And His name is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Luke 19.10 says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And today I hope that you will trust in Him. In Romans 3.10 it says there's none righteous, no not one. 3.11 says there's none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. But He's seeking you. Will you turn your life over to Him? As I get a song of invitation, I invite you, however you need to pray this morning, if you're a Christian, Maybe you haven't been putting the Lord Jesus Christ first like you should. Maybe you need to come and pray. But if you're lost today, I hope that today would be the day of salvation. If you would, let's all stand. Gracious Heavenly Father, God, we're thankful for Your Word and thankful for Your love. And Lord, I pray this morning, if they be one lost, they would be saved. And Lord, you know where each and every one of us stands. You know our needs, our concerns. Lord, help us today to be more like you. 
thankful for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. in Romans 3.20 it says therefore by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight if you're a good deed doer that ain't going to get you to heaven that's called clothing yourself with your own righteousness and not the righteousness of Jesus Christ it says for by the law is the knowledge of sin that's when Jesus when he was dealing with that rich young ruler he took him through the law and the rich young ruler said, I've done all that. But see, he wasn't seeking to put the kingdom first. He wasn't seeking to completely yield his life and surrender his will to the will of the Father. And that's what you've got to do this morning if you're going to serve Christ. You've got to completely turn your life over to him. You've got to repent of sin. You've got to realize that's what's separating you from the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your faith in him. As they sing one last uh, verse, you have another opportunity. Thank you for all being here today. Continue to pray for our pastor. Please come back tonight. Uh, any announcement before we dismiss this morning? Hey, Brother Chuck, y'all remember uh, Dr. Keith Kenneth and his boss? I talked to him Saturday, I believe it was. No, Friday. I talked to him Friday. He is back home out of the hospital. He's doing better. He still has to walk around with a catheter and a bag and all that kind of stuff. So. Okay. Okay, it's Kenneth Milliken. If y'all would continue to pray for him. Brother Randy, would you close us in prayer, please?